the specialist of pelvic floor that presented today. Um, that was really quite interesting to me. I, I, I'm very interested. I actually signed up for that. Uh, that well, that, that, mean, that means you're going to get the recording. So that's going to be yeah. perfectly fine. Yeah. Uh, I, I, it but, really was a, hey, uh, it, it was the classic um, advertisement. Let me show you just a little bit of the goods. And then I want you to come and purchase the, the, yeah. the education. But mm. she's, she did a good enough job. And the content was, was, was good enough. It's just, I believe that their presentation is going to be 75% transperineal or, yes. or however you say that. Well, and, it, well it could be. And, I, was, and, I was there years ago. Years ago, I collaborated back in 2005. I started collaborating with a women's health physio here. And at the time, they were just starting to look through the tummy with the curved probe. And, and I spent a little bit of time and effort trying to convince everyone they should be using the high frequency probe scanning transperineally and and people had started to look at it but only with the curved probe and you got uh, but we when i tried it and i only did it occasionally we'd run courses for it in the early days um and uh, but we could see much more detail and use clinically useful detail we scanned with the, the high frequency probe and so i was trying to tell them this but the women's health in certainly in the uk is quite conservative uh they were fairly non uh not interested in men getting involved yeah. and and so because i wasn't seeing any patients at it and the lady i collaborated with uh, was getting towards the end of her career uh and was therefore seeing a lot less and not in in mainstream health service so not seeing the volume of patients we never got around to doing any, any more than that. So I, I ran a few courses or I helped out on a few women's health courses uh, years ago. But I then, they st people started talking a lot about 3D and 4D, uh, which was going in a, in a different direction and, and direction I wasn't going to be able to input into because I wasn't seeing, because if you're not seeing the patients, then your insight is, is purely technical. And, and I don't do 3 and 4D for, because it's, it's not relevant to my work. Um, and and so i stopped but yes i'm i'm really interested to see how they're getting on and uh but uh, i was i was involved right at the start right took an interest right at the start uh, amazing uh, i i believe that i will have to say that if it does not allow me a uh, trans abdominal ability to at least provide some biofeedback relevance um, to engaging at least the pelvic floor in some uh, some patient motivation um, and 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 affirmation that they are able to bring that hammock up. If if I can serve as that type of an imager, I just don't see myself needing to go to the liability of doing that other component. And yeah. and uh, but but if you're going to be taking a look at the urethral neck, if you're going to be taking a look at a number of those things that we don't have that ability really to do uh, from from above, um, I would really like to hear your feedback on that, John. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I don't even know. Yeah, I don't know what to do with that. It is a it is an intriguing, let's say, service product line from an income standpoint in the United States. And yeah, because I, I have the ability to teach echo texture and to get a, a little bit of that, I would love to help to facilitate yep. at least part of the education to that. I just don't see myself performing the scans with the appropriate measurements and all that kind of stuff. And, and so. At the time it was going, we were doing that. I was doing a lot of transvaginal scanning. So oh. I was, I was scanning, I was doing internal exams. Yeah. You know, I, I, I could, I could do 15 in the morning. So I was, I was very familiar with that part of the world. <laughs> My John, but, you're, you're, you're just a wealth. You're a wealth of the periphery. No, you're, you're a wealth of, of the real center of, of, of sonography. Whereas MSK is just on, on the periphery. On the and, periphery, uh, literally. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Um, I know that today, believe as a rule, attempt to justify why we need to be seeing people two to three times a week to gain, to gain number one those visits, and we want to try and say, well, we we're smart 
And so we can, we can buy you a more rapid healing. And I think what I'm hearing John say is, you know what, 12 weeks go by and we can always pull that arm back to function. It, it may be a little tighter in certain areas, but that's going to get stretched when you're going to be reaching for something in the back seat of your car anyway, or, 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 or the higher area. Yeah. So let me get to one other point because I'm really eager to hear your input on, on hydro dissection as a function of addressing adhesive capsulitis. I heard it in, in, in Mark's um, presentation a little bit, especially when he started to take a look at the axillary approach um, to, 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 to the glenohumeral joint. And I also watched Ben Oy's presentation uh, who is a therapist uh, who does a, a, a bit of hip stuff. He had a specialist on who was talking about injections for that. Um, and, and the coracohumeral ligament and a few other places. Do you, do you pursue addressing frozen shoulder or adhesive capsulitis by interventionally ripping fascial planes by hydro dissecting, no. um, as, as, as tell me the story behind that, and 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 I guess that's where I should ask. I sh I, I, sh I should probably uh, look at what they said because it's hydro distension is the go to word in the UK at the distension. moment. Distension, distension, not dissection. So so we okay. inject into the joint and and you put some pressure, and I'm just. I'd call up a video of one uh, I did recently. If, if I'd love get. to see it if you can. But uh, what my colleagues do, and what Otto Chan, a guy called Otto Chan, pioneered as far as the UK at least concerned, uh, was high volume injections. So, are you familiar with high volume injections? I'm, I'm only familiar with the way I dissect your word, John. <laughs> yeah. But well, I, I've never the high volume it. high volume injections are you you push. A lot of a lot more fluid in there than wants to go, and you in theory stretch it out. So that's the fashionable way to treat frozen shoulders at the moment. Uh, and now I you, don't. You use the term "then wants to go." Now you need to understand in a hand that has no idea when I feel a refusal to go. Yeah. <laughs> so so I'm assuming there's this element of a of a spongy feel on the end of your thing, and then after that. You just go like, is that right? That, that's that. That's the theory. Yes, that's wow, what they okay. do. They they push in, uh, and I find a. I don't inject. I, I don't do high volumes into normal shoulders, but but uh, a normal shoulder will hold. Fifteen, twenty, maybe more mil of extra fluid. A normal shoulder is the actual capsule when I'm between in, in the glenohumeral joint. So we're not talking SASD. What about no. there? Well, people do uh, uh, do that as well. They do hydro distensions of, of the um, uh, uh, the bursa, but in terms of the frozen shoulder, it's primarily a problem of the of the glenohumeral joint. And uh, and I'm not aware of anyone doing hydro dissection of the coracohumeral ligament uh or the or the rotator interval uh though there are some people are doing now their these hydro distensions through the rotator interval and arguing they get better results the process itself is can you correct uh, me again on the on the terms because i think i went to hydro dissection and then you said hydro distension so can you can you make i'm using them interchangeably you're yep. you're not so no, when I when I do a, a carpal tunnel injection, I, I I dissect the nerve away from the the surrounding tissue. So I'm actually using putting tissue tissue planes that are approximated in the soft tissues. I will put a needle between them, and I will force fluid into there to drag the nerve away from the um, top of the carpal tunnel. Uh, that would be a hydro dissection. So where I'm getting it, and, and uh, I don't do very many of them, but uh, my colleagues do them for the Achilles and the burst, the uh, fat pad in front of the Achilles tendon. So in, in case of chronic Achilles tendinosis, you'll put the needle immediately deep to the Achilles tendon and you'll force fluid into that space to between the Kager's the... fat pad and the and and the peritoneum of the uh, of the Achilles tendon. 
the peritoneum isn't on the uh, deep surface of the Achilles. So they so the bursa actually approximates onto the uh, fibers on, on onto the tendon itself. Yeah. So you're actually then pulling the wrapping around the fat, pa uh, the, 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 the Kager's fat space, and you're pulling yeah. that away because they're fearful that it's, it's creating a friction syndrome there? Uh, they, the, the discussion is not, I don't think that there is such a, a good argument for whether it's a friction or something. It is just a, a fashionable treatment in the UK that you strip the, the, the fat that is that it, it attaches onto it and the fat does attach onto it it's not scarred onto it uh, a lot of the vascularity comes from there neovascular a lot of the neovascularity comes from there and that's where the argument comes from you you go in there and you strip away the uh, the, the, the fat so you you do a little hydro dissect so that's hydro dissection that's using the, the fluid to to push the surfaces apart and and, uh, and make it more accessible to do a little bit of of, of so tidying up with the needle. The differentiation might be that you can hydro dissect planes that don't have a a structural bag or sac to them, yes. but you yes. do hydro distend if you're attempting to increase the the yes. total um, yes. compartmentalizing of of the fluid. Yes. So so the people who pioneered the uh, uh, the hydro dist uh, distension of the uh, of the glenohumeral joint thought that they were stretching or ripping the fibers. That's bullshit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the the structures that are stopping you from moving your arm are not the sort that are going to be ripped by a little bit of extra fluid. What's going to what what will happen is that when you push too much fluid in which is what they do uh, it will the weakest point in the capsule which could be down the biceps or some area where they the capsule is 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 weak could is going to blow out like on a balloon or something like that so so that is what occurs they reported the literature was the original studies showed a lot of improvement in comfort and in movement Later after study, it rips out, after it after blows it out. out. Yeah. What is what is when better research that comes along later has not uh, reproduced that, but this technique is still fashionable. In and the so shoulder. I, yeah, for the shoulder. And you know, people do them for all sorts of bits and pieces for reasons I can't understand. But uh uh but I, I do I do a slightly modified version of that. So I use a much enough of volume to stretch the capsule because it may have a beneficial effect. Uh, but I don't make any attempt to burst the capsule. So uh, a lot of my colleagues will put in 30, anything up to 50 mils of fluid into there. And they keep putting it in after it decompresses. So what you see when you put the needle in is after about the fluid goes in very easily for about five mils and then at six to eight mils in a true frozen shoulder you usually get a tightening so you feel you see then the capsule suddenly swell as it reaches its maximum volume and then the resistance goes up so if you push the plunger in and then take your finger off the plunger will just push right back out again as a lot of the fluid just goes straight back up the needle what my colleagues will do is they will then force more fluid in uh, to stretch the capsule more and then uh, to a point where it then bursts and there is there are two opinions on whether that's a good thing or not and I'm on the side that says it it's of no benefit and the literature is equivocal so John, I'm going to share with you something that I probably should put a nice little black thing over, but it's going to be verbally here. Get ready for it. Is a mill and a cc the same thing? They are. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I, so, so, so you're saying upwards of 20 to 30 cc injections, and, and a mill is just a certain, I mean, it's a, it's a cubic centimeter, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's wow. the same thing. We, we use mill all the time rather than CC. Uh, 
partly because it's the metric system is uh, uh, it's the standard term for the metric system. I use nil because CC, when it's written, uh, can look like other things. <laughs> There's that air traffic controller in you coming out again, John. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's prone prone to error. Yeah, not it, it not in and of itself, but but when you write CC, it can be yeah, there are there are things that it can look the same as, and I can't even remember what they are. But I remember at the time someone proposing it as an argument, and me going, "All oh, right." Well, that's that's a good reason. <laughs> it makes sense to me, and so you just do ML. Um, I am to the point where I do not want to be um, any more um, just free associating because I know I will because I have questions. Um, I I wonder whether um, you feel that as you look at your day. What percent is interventional? Just get the patient in, deliver the 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 substance, uh, and what percent is identifying the actual pathology behind that? Because one, it seems, requires a mindset of in pursuit of metabolic signatures of pathology and structural signatures of weakness. And the other one is to identify anatomical structures and putting this little sharp white thing and then pushing this black thing in there. At, at, the, mo at, at the moment, if we ignore COVID-19, all my work uh, that involves injections at the moment is for organizations that employ me to to at the very least think about what I'm doing. So in the past, I've done lists in radiology departments uh, where I basically just had a list of 20 or so people who all needed an injection come from the surgeons. So that well, that is a role. I do that those lists occasionally, but most of my work now, all my regular work, they send me for an injection ostensibly but the expectation is that I'm actually reviewing the patient, deciding whether that's what they need and only doing an injection if it's appropriate and, and otherwise man deciding on, on what the alternative management should be. Fabulous. So, Before you were simply saying, all right, fine, you need to have a certain amount of mills delivered yeah. to a certain spot and, and, and you're going to be delivering that with or without evidence that that is the pathology yeah. that exists. Now you actually, they don't even need to have that consult and have somebody say this needs to be done because you are that consult and that answer. Yes, the, it's the, there's, there, it isn't ever quite as black and white as that uh, because even within radiology, when, uh, when I do lists in radiology, there is still an element of, I always do a, a diagnostic scan is always part of it. So, you know, you have 20 minutes usually if, you've, if you're doing a, an injection uh, slot, but you will spend the first, part, first few minutes of that actually talking to the patient, scanning the condition and seeing whether the person who has sent it to you actually was on the right track. So you, you, you check that the injection is appropriate because it's still you doing the injection. And within the UK, you are still responsible for it being appropriate, even if, uh, even if it's been requested to a, cer to a certain extent. So, uh, and I, I think it's just good practice. You know, if the person who sent you didn't have a, an ultrasound uh, or, or your, your experience, then it's like leaving your talents bur buried in the ground if you don't, if you don't use that. But, uh, but within my, the roles that I do more of now, they are, they are overtly, they come for an opinion with the, with the understanding that they're sent to an opinion for an opinion with me because uh, uh, the person who, who uh, who's sending them thinks that they need an injection plus an ultrasound and or an injection as well. They think that's the most likely way forward. So they come to me to get that opinion on whether whether an injection is appropriate or, or what is appropriate. So it's part diagnostic and part of <coughs> I'm asking, wow, I just decided to suck some saliva down my lungs. Um, I'm asking you this because the people who will be reviewing this, um, yeah. most of it, mostly, 
we'll be seeing what you're talking about in terms of reimbursement in this model we have here. Yes. And if I were to say to you, or, or so that you know, um, uh, and, and I'm going to use dollars, but we could use units. Um, yeah. For your trouble in what you're doing now in the U.S., that would be about a 250 unit um, um, encounter. There would be probably about 140 to 150 units designated yeah. as your diagnostic component, and yeah. the other, um, you know, 100 units, uh, 65 to 100 dollars or whatever would be the intervention what you what you there's a number of ways to even have your encounter be multiples on that depending upon the coding number as it relates to what joint and in a yes. hand each of these are their own joints uh, yes. each of those are their own units and so yes. there's there is the possibility of some fairly creative ways of making money, especially if the person doing the paying is yeah. a function of personal injury or, 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 or medical legal. So, so the logistics here has you, when, when you were talking about the lists previously, only getting multiples of 65 to 100 as opposed to 250. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and so at least just that, uh, to clarify that, as we take a look at those of us using it as diagnostic, because we don't have the interventional component, we're simply doing that component of what's going on or where is it in the continuum of progress? Yes. So. Yeah. So in the UK, the UK, it's on the private side, you have a similar issues, I guess, in that uh, patient, uh, patient is paying for a diagnostic scan, and then there is usually a more lucrative ta uh, tariff for an injection. It's, an injection. it's more valuable to do the injection than it is a cursory assessment of the diagnosis. I th I, I I think so. It's it's it is by no means it by, it's by no means black and white. It's because it's because cash pay. There's some of it's cash paying. A lot of it on the private side. Our private side is far smaller than our public side. So and on the and on the certainly certainly in terms of intervention and I think radiologically based the vast majority of that is done within the public sector, and so uh, and so those big lists I was talking about you that I do all in the public sector. Now, uh, so in terms of uh, the just the way we do things, the work I do now is all or almost all private companies doing public sector work. So again, the tariff element of it is much more complicated than that. My my largest uh, uh, client is has a total tariff, so they earn they're paid to provide healthcare to an area, uh, musculoskeletal healthcare to a, a an area, a county within the U, uh, within the UK, and so they they're not getting any tariff at all for my work. They just but they don't, but they're. Um, what they what they get is they get money for providing uh, the care for a population, and so they find it efficient to send them someone like me, because in theory at least I like to think I might be expensive, but the outcome is is still more efficient of being able to get a patient see and get them the right treatment, and then they don't go around the system continuously, and they hopefully feel better for it so that's that's quite a nice system to work within uh, some of my clients are done purely on how many scans I do and uh, and some of them are just uh, some complicated mix of the two um, and but so the system is not the same necessarily in my role which is a public private role uh, within the private sector you always have this problem of, of where the tariff is does distort the clinical side of things you know like I need to have i need to have a clarification of the word tariff um it takes tariff. my mind back to movies i don't know what the actual term is is it could it correlate to over here a fee or yes. or would it be a a build amount it, it is a patient encounter cost yes now that uh, what the chart the, the amount of money you get for a particular procedure 
what I bill as my gross billings would be known as a tariff? Well, no, that uh, the a tariff would be if if you pay uh, uh, when when a company is bidding for work for physiotherapy, they might say the tariff for physiotherapy is thirty pounds a session or so, or something like that, or forty forty dollars per session. If they were doing it for a scan, they would say for each scan the tariff is forty four pounds. So 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 that's what what we mean by tariff. So it, it it's like a a, you know a, a costs list so if you want this sort of if, if you want an injection it might be 150 pounds if you want a, a scan it's 100 pounds and if you want both you might get it for 200 and they're different tariffs so they're, they're the cost like, like a shopping you know the, the price yeah. list on the like a list. menu or, or a price list yeah now the next part of what I where, where I want to go with this discussion, at least on my part, since again it seems like it's all about me here. I, I, one day I'd like to actually feel as though I'm contributing to you, John. <laughs> <laughs> How, however, by the way, on a different point, did Amazon deliver your thing yet? They did. I was oh. I was going to say you you, you, you have, uh, here it is. <laughs> Oh, good. Is it what you wanted? Is it, does it, does it achieve what you want? I mean, are you able to do, are you able to show me slice thickness um, uh, and draw me the box with a little bit better than your mouse or are you yet set up to do that? that uh, you've disabled sh screen sharing. How do I do that every time, John? I don't, I don't know. I, I, I need to stop. How did I fix it the last time? You went into, you went into the box with four boxes in. You know, that separate, it usually comes up as a separate panel, the white box with the four boxes in where you, where you start a meeting. Yes. And up in the right, uh, if I remember in the um, uh, right-hand corner, there's a, there's a settings. Let me see if I, if I exit full screen, I should I'm be I'm just to. now making you host. All that right, way yeah. you, you can take the host that, and uh, that way that way I can show my incompetence. There you go. <laughs> let's go. Let's let's see if I can sweep out of that. Uh, I should be able to go. That box is right in my way. So how do you seven. know that I've done that? How how do you know that? It, does it have a hey loser? You can't do it. I mean, how how did you know so quickly that uh, I I had limited you? It just uh, disabled. Um, it was um, uh, screen share. Uh, I am going to, I'm just going to go screen share. Uh, uh, it, I can't, I will, I'd have to go searching for that. That's okay. Uh, That's all right. So yeah. I'm, we, we what I'm going some other to time. do, enter full screen, confirm, I'm leaving the meeting. No, that's not it. I'm, what I'm going to do is... I am going to yeah no I want to get out of that so get out of there now I should be able to screen share yeah so I can screen share so I'm just going to go straight to the whiteboard uh, and I'm going to share the whiteboard so I it's that there's 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 more of a learning curve okay in this. Uh, so so it's not amazing yet but. Uh, uh, can you theoretically one day use it just like a pen. Well, no, I, I, I'm theoretically, and that's the mouse working. So I'm hoping this, oh, yes. So, yeah, it is, I haven't learned to use it very well. Are you okay. seeing that? Yeah, yeah. So I am going to, oops, uh, I haven't, it is a bit, uh, it's a bit too good, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> but you will ultimately one day be able to grab color and you'll be able to, oh, here you're erasing. Yeah, but it's, okay. it's just, it's, I, I'm, I'm using a pen. I've literally got, a, I don't know if oh, you okay. can see that. All right. I've literally got a pen in front of me and I can, and I can draw on here. And it's just a, a little bit, uh, it, it takes a bit of getting used to, but I can. Oh, Spray paint or something like that. You're one of those graffiti artists in Seattle right now. Yeah. <laughs> and it's about, I don't know what oh, those okay. pictures are better. I'm, I'm seeing the greater maybe... tuberosity, and, and that's the, the coracohumeral ligament, or is that the supraspinatus attachment? Oh, that's the that's short, the, that's the long axis. The long axis. I'm, <laughs> not, I'm not a natural drawer. 
So, yeah. so, but, but, but it's a lot easier. Yes. It's a lot easier than using the, uh, using the mouse. Absolutely. And I would get better at it. So, so it, it is definitely work in progress. Good. I'm glad. And what I'm hoping is I've been playing around with it. What I'm hoping to do is to be able to do fancy stuff like um, screen, uh, screen share and use a sort of uh, two different windows in a screen so I can have the picture above it. Yeah. And below it. And I'm to say there, there, there is a bit of a learning curve. Uh, but what I'm also hoping to be able to do is to be able to get, you can also do tracings. So with the software that comes with it, you can, I think you can take an ultrasound picture and may be able to trace it. So just get the main lines out of it and be able to do that. So it's... Um, Send me the link to the program, John. I, 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 I need to make sure this happens. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I've got the software. It's, it's just learning how to use it. Okay. I, I, the, last thing I need to, the last thing I want to leave you with is, again, something for me. And that is, I am needing to the next, you might say, video in a series of exposing the value of ultrasound to physical therapists. Yep. And, and again, <laughs> I'm the one responsible for setting it up this way is, yeah. is the, the continuum of healing in structure. Um, I am eager to, I'm eager to be able to say that there is an echo signature that reflects each of the phases that Jill Cook has in her soft tissue continuum of, of disorganization or, or, or inflammation or, or whatever. Um, yeah. yeah, I don't like the sound of that guy. In, in, in no, way, no. <laughs> but, 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 but I'm also... Um, I'm also, I, I guess you might say I locked horns a little bit online with an individual who said that bony remodeling and the process that bone goes through on its continuum of, 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 of healing has a different metabolic process to a certain extent. So what I'm, what I'm really looking to have you consider is... If I send you an email that simply says, to what extent do you believe we can obtain a signature echo texture that would allow me to say, this is inflammatory and would have the itis on its diagnostic name, and this is actually beyond that into pathology and would simply have osis now again this is an arbitrary designation and i'm not trying to get that but i'm i i do believe we can do better than just saying opathy uh, yes. and and so i would like to know if it's possible in your mind to steal any image that you might have to be able to see whether that could reflect the what, one to three or one to seven days the the the, the three to you know to two months the, the traditional model and how that fits in. So it would be really nice to be able to see acute fracture, to be able to see uh, softening callus formation around the fracture, and then hardening calcific formation. It would be really nice to be able to see that. And, and I'm seeing your eyes, buddy, and I think I'm hearing you go, not gonna happen. But, but, but I... I, I <laughs> what, uh, what I, see, I see these, and it, it has been my my wish, and it hasn't happened in 20 years, uh, just because I've not been in the right place uh, and uh, or been able to put it together because of, sort of work commitments and things like that. I have always wanted to serially scan these patients. And I've never, apart from people like my wife with tears and things like that, I've never been able to do what the, it's crying out for is actually take these patients and scan them every day or scan them every week. And it, it was always think if, if someone hadn't done it by the time I retired or got struck off or whatever, would 
would be to do that, to, to set up a practice where I just took patients and I scanned them right from the start of injuries and I just seriously scanned them. The guys in the, doing the football, the people you want to talk to about that specific thing are, are the likes of uh, uh, Carlos, Carlos Predit, I think is his surname. Uh, the guys in Spain, particularly, that love ultrasound and have access to the professional football players. And they are scanning these patients with a much higher resolution, a bit like your friend who does the... Um, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, th thank you for are, looking at that. He, he, he's are, a good guy. Yeah. Yeah. And, it, and it'd be lovely to be in contact with him because the, you know, the th things you look at, think. but he's, again, he, he gets two or three snapshots. Yes. But what you really want is to sit and do this. And I've, one of my, again, long-term dreams was to, uh, was to take things like fracture healing and, and do volume acquisition with the ultrasound. And you just go and you acquire the volume. But you acquire, acquire it day one, day three, day five, day seven. And then you could write each of those up. But, but here's, here's the thing, John. You're the scientist who will not say anything until he has so much ample evidence that there's nobody on God's green earth that's going to shut you up for the truth. Now, notice on the other side of your screen, there's me. I'm ready to claim things long before we know that to be the case because people know that I'm, a, I'm, 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 I'm enthusiastic about this. So yeah. here's the thing I want to I, I want to tell you. There's nobody with the hours of scanning that you have and in your mind right now, even though it would be wonderful to have this on everybody, you have so many data points from yeah. patients that have come in who've told you, well, I'm one week out and I'm three weeks out. I have in your brain every data point I need to make an absolute claim. You don't because you have to have these case studies because you're a scientist. I just have access to you and I can make claims keeping you out of the picture. I the, only, the, problem, <laughs> the, pro the problem is that what I see and, and this is where, where, where the issue comes in, is that what, what you actually get in terms of ultrasound with these, uh, particularly the early cases, where, where you're looking for, where we, I would say where the money is. I'm, I'm not talking about real money, but where the, uh, the, the thing is, is, is being able to say something more about what, what is actually going on based on the ultrasound yes. at that particular stage. Yes. The, what actually happens when, when things get injured is very complicated. And, and so what you see is very, very different from scan to scan, even if with fractures, because it all depends on, on, on how things are proliferating. And that's why the patients all respond very differently. They might go through the same uh, chemical cycle as, uh, as the markers come. What happens anatomically is very different. Every tear is different because, you know, just at what happens during the trauma, uh, do they, does it pull off in a certain way? Does it stretch and snap and all those differences between the plasticity or well, that's the way I imagine it. And so what you get is this very complicated appearance. And that's, that's what you see in, uh, in an acute pathology is, uh, is sometimes really straightforward. It's torn. But the really straightforward ones are the, not the ones you're, you're interested in. You're, you're talking about the, the, ten, uh, the tendon damage rather than tendon rupture. Tendon rupture is, is straightforward. Right. Tendon damage is much more complex because what's happened is that a myriad of, of uh, vessels uh, within that structure or potential vessels probably to a certain extent within that structure have, have been damaged. And so the blood has gotten to all sorts of different places and it's changed all the things around it. And sometimes when it's an enclosed space, it will respond one way and, and sometimes another. And so what you get in a relatively acute things is a lot of blood products and then a, a mishmash of changes, you know, with some free fluidy blood, you know, that black appearing blood or, you, or, or that really gray, misty, diffuse changes within the, within the structure. And that, that's where you get this this sort of almost collage effect so you, so it can almost during the initial period it can look like anything 
I'm, I'm then, not going to let I'm not you know, like I'm not going to let your 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 scientific brain rain on my parade yet. Because yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm telling you this. I believe that the binary of just time passage is what we're presently using to let my players go back to the field or to the court. Yes. You know, it's been eight weeks, and so you can do this. I yes. believe there's an echo signature there, John, that and we there can say, no, it's still creating this dark effusion. We still have yes. the dynamics of neovascularity. It's that kind of stuff that makes me go, hey, wait a minute, you're a young, fit kid. He said eight weeks, but it's totally done with its inflammatory phase, and I can start having you load this at five and a half weeks. It's yes. that kind of stuff that makes a difference to me, and I'll make up if I have to, and I won't even claim you said it, but I would like to have some le level of credibility to say, no, it, we just can't say eight weeks because the chain-smoking 80-year-old is going to take that long to, no. to, to, to get that. Do you follow no. what I'm saying? Yes, and, and, and the person you want to speak to is Carlos. No, I want to talk to Carlos. you, John. No, no, but Car <laughs> no, no, Carlos, Carlos is, is I, I went and helped out on, on, on a course he was doing here in London uh, about last year, actually. We were going to do it again this year. I'm really disappointed because he, he opened my eyes at that stage to the sophistication of these early phase muscle okay. injuries. Can I, can, can I have the contact from you and I'll beg him to be a third person on this discussion? Because, yeah. because I would love to have I would love to have your name that I can drop for the credibility, and then I promise you I won't talk half as much as I do to you, and I'll let you run it. But I need to I'm going to send you an email that will compose at least what I need to get together because I have to generate a sensational presentation that I'd like to have founded in some truth. I'm willing to hang out there and be shot at by the people who really know what they're talking about. And I promise I will never, well, now I probably better pull this video. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, the, he, I am not an expert in that field. He is. He, he, of he bone does or of soft tissue healing? Of, 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 of soft tissue. Okay. This is, this is this soft tissue healing. The bone, the bone healing, I, we just don't, we don't use ultrasound as a prognostic thing. So I can't tell you when a bone is ready to go because I just haven't seen that at all. Well, this is the strange part, John. I'm gonna be telling you on a video yeah. and you're gonna look yeah. and go, oh, Fritz, oh, Fritz. Yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna look, I'm gonna look with interest because <laughs> this is something that I've wanted to do for years. You and have so much of the stuff that no one else has by virtue of the fact that you have data points up here. Nobody yeah. does, and nobody's taken the time to do that. Now, sure, let's set up a good study where we can do this somehow, yeah. and you can get your scientific accolades by doing it correctly. But I believe you have, you have a strong statement that I can make sensationally that nobody's going to counter, because I can always tell them, have you talked to John Letty? <laughs> but, but this is this is pathology that i do you, you've got to re remember when when it comes to bone this is pathology i don't see because people don't come to you it takes you six months normally to get to see me and you see i'm first person imaging these fractures john exactly. and, 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 is, and i see them within exactly. within the day yeah. so um so, I, so I don't, you don't you need to be. You need to be doing this. You need to be yeah, standing. Yeah, I should. I saying, should say. Look, it's free on me. I need to see you every two days. And yeah. and and. Well, uh, well, you not even that. You see, you say you you want, you want to see him. Let's say, day one. You you take two or three of them. You go day one, day two, day three, day four, day five. But then you see him. Week one, week two, week three, week four, week five. I can do that no, regularly because no, no. I have contacts yeah. to 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 the urgent care centers here, and I could easily yeah. set this up now. Yeah. I don't want this to all of a sudden become a burden because what I want to have is I want to ask you, and if you don't say no, then I'm going to say yes. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, John, I, I'll send you information. I would like to have the contact information. I won't lean on him too heavily, but it would be wonderful if he could just join us um, in, in discussing this. Yeah. Uh, whether, whether he's, um, uh, I don't know what he's, I, I, I know his him name. Only. Just give me his name and I'll find him on LinkedIn or somewhere. Well, and I'll are you, are you on, like you're on Twitter, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Let, let's, let me just get up Twitter. It's easiest. Where's Twitter? 
Uh, let's see. Twitter. Yeah, that, that's Twitter. Let's just go. I'm just going to find Twitter. Uh, yeah, let's just go into Twitter. Is there is there, there is something seriously wrong with my internet. It is uh, it when when the weather is bad, it goes it goes downhill badly. Uh, the, the, our cables are shot in this down this street. I think we've had the engineers out all down up and down the road over the last few weeks. You know, I'm gonna. I've not done this, John. I'm gonna get on Google Earth with my son's um, VR headset, and I'm gonna walk down your street. I I think you've given me your address. Yeah. Uh, sometime, well, but I'm, I'm gonna see where in the world you live. <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna search search Carlos. He should come up. Where is it? Why isn't he? Why didn't our oh, Carlos? Carlos, yeah, he's right at the top. I'm just going to uh, I'm going to share screen with you. So we're going to go. Yep, there we go. And he's just right at the top of my page. Uh, tell me when you got it. Yep, I have it. Zambelli. Yeah. Can you see Carlos put it? Pardon? Oh. I talk to him on a, I talk to him regularly. Yeah, he is he is the best person I know. Him and his friend um, who does the videos. Oh. They oh. they are the guys. That, okay. That know I'll reach you know, out I, to him and I'll see if he's willing to to come on with us and just talk about um uh, the possibility of um let's say um what would you even be calling it? The um well, I'll see if he's willing to come on. Are you okay yes, if I do but, that, John? Yeah, but I, w I would say have a chat with him. Okay. Because I, I do, he, he sees elite athletes all the time and does lots of MRI correlation. So his, his area of expertise is almost okay. completely separate to mine. All but right. yeah, I, w I would love to talk to him, but, it's, but, but I don't know whether uh, us having a conversation together. Okay. Would would give you any would just add to the complications. All right, yeah. I, I I will respect that. Um, is he yeah. a PT? Is he an MD? What is his radiologist? He's he he is a sports doctor. Okay, I'm and he's a, he's in London. Was in Spain, but yes, he's. Hey, John. He's, you know, he's in uh, he's in uh, uh, oh uh, Barcelona. Boy, those are. Those are romantic sounding places. They you know, are. I'm, they are great. I'm, I'm yeah. here in Burlington, Washington. <laughs> you're, you're you're there in London. You know what I'm saying? Oh well, um, John, I'm gonna let you go. It's not. It's past nine o'clock your time. Yeah. I, I I I I will I will want to do this right so that these can again be something of relevance in a tangible world. But I wanted to prep you with. Uh, I may be sucking your brain um, for at least. Yeah, maybe I could. Well, we'll talk about it later. We just do it. I'll see you next Thursday. Okay, sounds good, John. Take care. No worries. See you later. Bye bye. Bye bye.